Hi folks, you might not have been expecting a third part to a semi-finals, but here we are. That's because somehow with the way the tournament um, started out, or maybe something else that happened, well, it brought us to this. Six players. So far we've seen we've seen Solwyn and Xylo. You'll have seen Pogis and August. And here we have another known player plus a lesser known player when it comes to GSC. But they've been grinding pretty hard. So that so I've been told directly by them. We got Sulcata, also known as the Milkman of GSC. You guys thought I wasn't going to mention that. Of course I was going to mention that. Then we got Beware of Coco or Hello Pona. So I guess they're also known as Coco. Uh, hence why the Beware of Coco thing. Because uh, on ladder people were afraid of him. I don't know what ladder. I don't really know what tier they specialize in. But they're here. And we're playing some Gen 2 if my voice sounds like I'm lacking energy, that's probably because uh, my head's in some weird place and I've been kicking a sandbag extremely, extremely hard, so my shin sort of hurts, but whatever. Um, all right, let's kick off <laughs> this series. So we got Zap lead versus Lax lead with a turn one Toxic. I am a fan of that. That looks pretty cool. That also means that Cloyster can go in and lay the spikes and immediately threaten a boom if it wants to. Interesting switch to Gengar, though. Um, is it Thief? No. Just going to scout for the EQ. Not a bad play, actually, now that I think about it. So if this were even Curse, you know, you it, it has to watch out for that. So the Cloy could stay in. Uh, ooh, risking getting... Badly hurt by that thunder. Don't really remember the damage calcs, though. And, yeah, Cloyster could just go for it again, really. And then try and attempt a spin block, but it is risky because of the whole thunder shenanigans. Uh, mind you, Starmie's faster in Gen 2. Uh, it's not EV dependent. The EVs are always maxed out. Raikou comes in. And Sulcata rocking some stall uh, team. So we got a... Potential double spinner here, so Fori could... No, Fori's not really safe to go for spikes. Ooh, I definitely... Mm, clicking EQ would have been so nice uh, because of the poison lax. Whatever. Like, even if they have spikes and all that, I don't think it was a big deal, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So, Zap coming in. Zap, they didn't really scout for the um, sleep talk as of yet, so that... Zapdos, which has Toxic, I would imagine, is uh, a Whirlwind Mine. It's going to be put in range. Um, Needle King coming in on the Missy. Kind of scary, because um, that's one of the few Mons that aren't affected by the Mean Look and Baton Pass ban, because, well, it doesn't use Baton Pass, so it can just use Mean Look shenanigans. Um, it's... It's at the same speed tier as Missy, though, so there's that. Lax going out, coming back in. Or Missy going out, coming back in is what I meant to say. It is female, something to keep in mind. So that could be, uh, you know, a signal like, hey, I have a tract. But nobody ever uses that. Psychic, but it also has Toxic, so that's going to be a pretty big punish on the T-Tar. Um... Titar could have been could be very helpful. Uh, if Missy switches out here, it could be pursued. Sulcata, I'm gonna attempt a double protect there, staying in, uh, just to stall out and essentially get this Titar to take, you know, progressively or more and more damage from Toxic. So Sulcata seems to have him right where he wants him. And I think that Rock Slide does more damage. Let's let's check that out immediately. Let's do that. Damage calc. Attack 
Tyranitar, Mistrevis. Yeah, Rock Slide does more. Mm. They could have pushed it a little more, I think. So, that Titar is dead. Yeah, that sucks. Because the, the Rock Slide can do up to 50, so it's actually, even with the Toxic and the Protect and Rest, it kind of favors the T-Tar a bit, especially if you just switch back out. Uh, kind of uh, a blunder there to just stay in. I mean, it was pretty clear what he was going for. Lax taking some damage. Uh, that an EQ wouldn't have killed it, but it would have put it in such a dangerous spot. Now it's completely able to live a couple of hits. It can rest here. Going to Gengar of all things. If you had um, gone for the EQ, you could have easily used uh, Zapdos to threaten it. And essentially, if the the reason why the thunder is a bit of an over prediction is because of that um should skarm come in later you're still gonna hit something or you're not gonna hit skarm that turn but you can hit it the following turn they're not gonna bring in skarm in fact maybe yeah whatever that's it that's all i have to say in that regard eq would have been nice but it wouldn't have put him in an amazing spot because he doesn't have a uh, a whole lot to work with right now. He does have spikes. He has a Zapdos. I'm gonna imagine that the Zapdos is Whirlwind, but he, and he and they actually managed to take out the Starmie. Would you look at that? Relatively unscathed. Now's a good time. For some whirlwind shenanigans, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, do you T bolt? I guess you do. All right, takes out the forty. That's good. Raikou. Okay. Hmm. I should have seen that coming. Okay. Ice Punch? No. Ugh. Okay. Well, that, I have to say, was a uh, misjudgment on my part because I'm kind of not paying attention to when the turn begins, when it ends. So it's Gengar versus Raikou. Um, hmm. Yeah, no, a boom wouldn't have been a big deal for Sulcata. It would have been a bigger deal for for um, our friend here, Pono. But this really sucks, man. It sucks because of the, the paralysis and all that. It's not even like a team that relies on paralysis so much. Uh, yeah. But that really made a big difference. I might even have gone for double edge. I can't remember the the percentages, but uh, so far Salcada has not been pushed um, at all. For like, he ha he has a completely healthy skarm, and the skarmery hasn't even been like used. The surf. What happened here? my friends what happened chloe coming in shit that would have been nice boom on the raikou hmm i'm surprised they, that he even went to raikou okay i might have even stayed in a second turn on the roar and then boomed yeah. Didn't gain anything out of that. Didn't gain anything out of this turn. Sadly. Whirlwind, finally. Something might happen, but it's lax, so. Whirlwind chain broken. Never mind. 
Well, that went well. Whirlwind? Yup. Nice. Whirlwind? Nice. This is going well for Coco, and this is what makes this so good. Whirlwind Zap, but the other thing is that the Zap has a Toxic, so the idea was to land the Toxic on the Zap, I would imagine, and that it accumulates lots of damage every time Lax tries to come in and or Raikou. But if they're forced in, they don't take toxic damage. Shot every time I do that in a video, I talk about toxic damage and not being triggered by Whirlwind. All right, so <clears throat> Gengar dies in the meantime. Um, Cloyster dies, so it's 2v4. Have to hope for a crit. Nothing. Uh, huh. Whirlwind wouldn't have been bad actually on the rest turn because he was obviously clicking rest. All right, more Whirlwind stuff. I'm sorry I'm skipping this stuff. Why am I skipping? It's probably because I'm really tired. Oof. Okay. So as things are, the Raikou is just a uh, sitting duck because it can't really attack it can't has to burn one turn and he has to watch out for the potential toxic there the missy is um in range of a t-bolt i believe the raikou comes in that was a that was a bit of a i don't know about the damage calc there let's let's have a look at our friendly damage calculator again so we got our zap versus Mistrevis, and we want to find out if on that particular turn it was guaranteed that the Mistrevis would die. I mean the turn following the Protect, or if, yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, at the same time, if it wasn't guaranteed, maybe go for Whirlwind anyway? I don't know. Never mind. Whirlwinding here? No, it doesn't happen. Whirlwinding. At least the Snorlax used some of its age, some of its sleep talk. PP. How many whirlwinds? Sixteen whirlwinds have been used. Ooh, toxic mist. That that matters a lot good of him to not expend too much t-bolt or uh, whirlwind stuff okay going to the lax i like it that was a good play there gonna double back yes nice very nice but protect actually just mitigates all of that making missy get back all of the stuff it lost in the first place but you could have could have at least started a whirlwind thing. Okay. Ugh. Some these are uh, tough moments to make a call, and it looks like Hello Pono is a little bit angsty, trying to get the get a KO on Skarmory. But of course, Solcat is is never gonna do that. Never gonna let Zap just kill the Skarm because that's his defensive win con. I mean, this Missy did did a lot of work. Put it a lot of work. Finally dies, but yeah, ten ten thunder PP thunderbolt PP. You can make that work. That can definitely happen. Raikou gonna go and click rest. The lax just burns a turn. That's too bad. I would have clicked. There was nothing to lose. But all of that said, a last mon lax situation could potentially break through this skarmory. Potentially. Depending on the set, of course. We don't know what set it has. It only attacked for the first time on turn 90. So, and it seems not to be in any rush to do anything. It's just gonna go for 
It's Cursed Drill Peck. We don't know if it has Whirlwind. Um, Coco just stay good. Oh, I don't entirely agree with that, but it's hard because GSC looks like a, such a slow paced game that it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta just do this thing, this one thing. And that's actually not, that's rarely ever the case at high level. You have to change your game plan a bit. You're going to have to attempt one thing while also simultaneously attempting another strategy. So, and then you result with something entirely different, I guess. So Zap coming in here and the Raikou would come in, I would, I would imagine. And the Lax could also come in. We're going to put this on fast, see if any progression is made. I mean, they're not use. they're not turns where they're not doing anything, but <clears throat> whirlwind again, Solkata attempted to damage the Zapdos with sleep talk, but <clears throat> oh shit, painful hiccup. <clears throat> okay. Zapdos. Ugh. Oh, God. Ooh, that would have been a good whirlwind turn, though. That would have been a good one. Uh, okay. Zap coming in. HP, ice, fine. Whirlwind. No. Whatever. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, no. So, Kata going on the defensive. He's not going to go for a roar chain, even though he has the mon to do it. Because his, con his win condition is just stalling out his opponent. Get some drill peck uh, chip on the zap, which, of course, doesn't have rest, so... Okay. I almost wonder if... How is this already dying? How is my computer dying? Okay. Okay, so my computer died on me, um, but uh, yeah, so the game froze for a sec, so did the recording, so did time and space itself. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm kind of tired. So we got some curse wars going on, and this was the kind of thing I was talking about. So it's last mon lax, and with a decent amount of double edge and rest PP, but not really that much. By the looks of it, it would appear that the Skarm has a huge advantage. Um, but at the same time, it's no longer able to phase it. So if this is not sleep talk, then it definitely wins. If this is whirlwind, then it probably wins, but also could be could lose. So Skarmory is out of curse PP. Runs out of well, it uses one rest, but uses two rests and three 
and four. Here's where I would actually start attacking. Okay, they're not doing that. If you do that, yeah, you gotta keep some rests. But they ran out of sleep talks. Okay, there's a crit. But, again, there's like a lot to, to unpack. Uh, honestly, this Skarm just wins. I, I don't, it wins. There's nothing, nothing worthy of note here. Yeah, it, it goes down to 30, but that's, that's all calculated. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, quite the slobber knocker. I have to say that Sulcata kind of managed to... He wasn't quite phased. And I wouldn't expect less from one of the GSC mainstays. Like, really, he doesn't join any tournaments... He just comes once a year at this point in 2022 and 2021. He just comes once a year to claim the GSC Cup. You know. I don't really remember if he won the last one, but... Usually there's Tony Flygon in the, in the finals and then losing. Sad. Okay, I didn't say anything. I just was talking. I was just rambling on, and I didn't even introduce game two. Game two, folks. So we got Eggy versus Lax. Stun Spore. Okay, Stun Spore turn one. And uh, Miracle Berry, probably. Or Thief, Eggy. But they would have clicked Thief turn one. Four, are you going to go for those spikes? Egg Saggy. Eggy the Executor. Yes, that is a Miracle Berry. Okay, so uh, basically threatening that um, foray of HP fire, hence why Solkata goes in. And it looks like a uh, replica of the team before that. So we have Sleep Powder, we have Stun Spore, but no attacks coming from the beloved Coco. I'm in love with it. I'm in love with the Coco. Salkata so scouting for flamethrower, but Coco not giving him the satisfaction he needs. He's like, nope, you're not going to find any info from me. So, Eggy going to come back in, threatening a boom here. Nothing. All right, that's fine. Goes for a psychic and dies. Uh, right. Usually, more momentum is gained from a lead Eggie. And in comes a Marowak on a predicted Raikou. That's pretty ballsy. Okay. What do we get? We got, ooh, sword dancing on the Raikou there. Doubly ballsy. So, sure, Raikou's dead. Crit doesn't matter at all. But in comes a second electric, and you're, you kind of wish that you hadn't let Marowak take so much damage. I mean, that 4A has to be a spinner. Lax. Uh, I have no idea as to what set this could be. There's EQ. Dealing just, just more damage to the 4A. Just slightly more. Spikes disappear, but in comes 4A again. And it takes a hidden power to the face. And it's quad weak to f hit him power fire. So it's pretty easy to kill with a special attack. Um, yeah. Golem gets toxic. Ugh. Hate to see that. The golem is toxic. So it's a double spin team. That's pretty interesting. Oh, so we got Zap. Zap in. I, You know what? I don't know, man. I, I have like... You guys will have to forgive me. I'm not re-recording this, but this, this recording for me is pretty unenthusiastic. So Zap. At least throw out the thunder, bruh. Nope.
Okay, okay, EQ. Uh, nothing. Does it have fire glass? I guess not. Fourie on Fourie action. So is the Zapdos Whirlwind or is the Lax Sleep Talk? I don't know. They switched the Lax out a lot. So I guess that the Lax isn't Sleep Talk. It's not the status absorber of the group. Marowak is dead. Oh, wow. They forfeit. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the chat, they he was kind of... Uh, Coco and Solcata were just sharing info um, about the, well, not sharing info, they were just exchanging opinions about their games. Okay, so that means that Solcata will be moving on to the finals of, uh, <clears throat> you know, the GSC Cup. Three-way, three-way finals, a set will be played between Soulwind and Solcata. A set will be played between Pogis and Solcata. And then there will be one between Pogis and Soulwind. That sounds pretty freaking hype. All right. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. This will be one of the biggest GSC Cup finals. And the hypest. The hypiest. Bye-bye.